gremlins! Welcome to part two of making characters based on frogs I've sewn. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get to part two. Thank you for your patience. I have three more frogs with lots of interesting design potential today. First up, I have a frog embroidered with a fern and two mushrooms. This is the second time I'm drawing this character. I drew him a month ago, then lost both the drawing file and the recording when my hard drive died. I finally had the heart to draw him again, with the same design details. Unfortunately, I still like my original character better, but he is lost to cyberspace, and this replacement will have to do. I picture this character as an academic. He loves nature and studies botany and mycology. I've drawn him in the middle of a field study. I've given him a backpack which is full of notebooks, books, a magnifying glass, and various bottles of samples. He's wearing a sweater vest embroidered with the same pattern that I embroidered the frog with. He's also wearing a button-up shirt with rolled sleeves and wide-legged pants stained with mud from his expeditions. His eyes are the same green as the button eyes on the frog. I used green, brown, and beige in this drawing, the three colours on the original frog. My main aesthetic inspiration for this character is the goblin core slash gremlin core aesthetic. I picture this character as having spent the whole day in the forest, examining the undergrowth and taking samples of different species of ferns. He is returning home now, muddy from pushing through the foliage. His backpack is heavy with jars and research. It may have been a long and dirty day, but it was also a rewarding day. I wasn't sure what to name him at first, but decided on the name Forest. This next frog is a frog fairy. The base without wings is just a red-eyed tree frog, but with the addition of wings, they become a fantasy magical creature. When I started this drawing, I was intending to make a character that dressed in the fairy core aesthetic. However, this character decided she did not want that. Because of the very bold colours in the frog, I ended up with a bold and sparkly character. She's a fairy with an adventurous side. I think she would be a kind person, but very blunt and impulsive, loving to socialise and try new things. She would be very loud, fiercely loyal, and pushes her friends out of their comfort zones. I gave her a short halter top dress with a thin belt, boots, long red hair, and many rings. I also gave her white fishnet stockings, because the frog's wings are made of white mesh, which has a very similar pattern. I'm working with very bright green and red, so this is a very neon character. I made her dress green and her items red, to give contrast. It was hard keeping this character from shifting into a Christmas look, but I think the brightness of the green keeps it away from holly colours. This character definitely stands out from my other frog characters. All the other characters are foresty or naturey, and she is bold and bright and very unnatural. I like to think that she started out like the rest of the characters, loving nature, but then went to a city for a change of pace and fell in love with the busyness and the neon lights. She still likes nature, but also the chaos of city life. She stays out late and wakes up at noon and has dozens of close friends. I kind of wish I'd made this character fit a little closer with the others in the series, but I do like the contrast she provides to the others. Her name is Faye. Now for the final frog, for now at least. This is the frog that, to date, has taken me the longest to make. The embroidery is a bit clumsy, but this was my first attempt at this style. This frog has an embroidered skeleton, although I didn't draw the leg bones, since my stuffed frogs do not have the correct anatomy. This frog would definitely be goth, really into horror and the macabre, but a softie at heart. I have given her a black hoodie with a ribcage and spine pattern, to match the embroidery on the back of the frog. I've seen this kind of do-it-yourself hoodie design on Pinterest, where the skeleton is painted onto a black hoodie with bleach. It's something I really want to try at some point, so I think her wearing it is pretty cool. Originally, I was going to give her baggy pants, but decided doing both that and tall boots was not going to work, so I switched to giving her a plaid skirt with chains and safety pins. The amount of detail I put into this image took a long time. The many types of jewellery, fishnets, patterns on the clothing, buckles, etc. I kept this character in a black, grey and white colour palette, with slightly off-white on her hoodie. Her hair is bleached pale grey, with half of it shaved off. She has dark eyeshadow up to her brow bone and dark purple lipstick. She DIY'd almost all her clothing and loves doing all kinds of art. She listens to alternative music and vampire audiobooks. She has the worst type of sleep schedule and powers herself on energy drinks and coffee. People who don't know her think she is intense and scary, but her friends know that she's a softie who is deeply passionate about justice, art, and books. She can rant for hours about a subject she is invested in, and is fiercely loyal to her friends. She feels most comfortable dressing the way she does and doesn't care what outsiders think. 
She also doesn't care about how damaged her hair is, because she'll probably shave the rest of it off at 4am when she's in a weird mood. I don't dress in a goth style much personally, but I think it looks so cool, so drawing this character was really fun. It took a long time for me to figure out a name for her, and I'm not sure I'm 100% on board with what I decided on. I named her Styx, a chosen name. This name referenced the river that souls cross when entering the ancient Greek underworld. Here are all three characters I created in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me create them. That's all the characters based on frogs I have for now. As I create more frogs, there is always a chance this short series will return, but until then, stay tuned for regular content. See you all soon. Bye!